try to imagine for a moment what it would be like to be trapped in a remote area on Alaska's coast, and your only hope for survival is to sail away to safety across the harsh and deadly cold sea, or take your chances traveling through the dark, unforgiving forest with whatever it was that was killing people. The woods surrounding the small, isolated town of Portlock were holding a secret. Hidden within miles and miles of dark, dense, uninhabited forest was a creature so terrifying it had the residents of this small Alaska town cowering in their homes. Because they knew, they had heard the stories from the local native Alaskans, that when the sun goes down and the fog rolls in, the monsters will come. The Nantanak, the ones who steal people. This story is not a work of fiction. Portlock, Alaska was a very real town, built to provide many people with a new life. But this place that was once full of possibilities for its residents soon turned into a nightmare. In the span of only 30 years, this small, thriving town went from establishing a post office and appearing on the U.S. Census to a completely abandoned ghost town, frozen in time and left to rot. Rumors and whispers of the terrible fate that was falling upon the people of Portlock soon started making their way to the media. A very large, wild, hairy, half-man, half-creature was stalking and killing the residents of this small, isolated town. And the survivors of Portlock? Some of them claim these rumors were true. Something terrifying had been lurking in the woods surrounding Portlock for years. And those who were unlucky enough to have encountered it, well, the only thing left of them to tell the tale of what they saw was their crushed bones and mangled bodies. The area of Alaska that holds the decaying remains of Portlock is situated on the coast of the Kenai Peninsula in an area called Port Chatham Bay in the Gulf of Alaska. And the location, it provides the perfect setting for a spooky story, one filled with a mix of local folklore and urban legend. It's surrounded by miles of uninhabited forests on one side and the frigid, icy cold ocean on the other. But the very things that make this place so scary is also what has been drawing people to it for centuries. In 1785, a British naval captain named Nathaniel Portlock and his crew found their way to Port Chatham Bay during an expedition to explore the Pacific Northwest. While in the bay, they discovered the remains of an abandoned native village in what appeared to be the perfect area. There were plenty of resources and access to a large variety of fish, including salmon. What luck. Portlock and his crew had found a place to rest. Although it didn't work out for its previous inhabitants, it was just what the captain and crew needed. However, shortly after setting up camp, the crew started to fall ill with a sickness that seemed to come out of nowhere, and some of them began to grow paranoid, as if something in the woods was watching them. They could feel its gaze burning into them every time they turned their backs to the trees. It was like the forest didn't want them there. It was angry, and they knew it. The crew begged Captain Portlock to leave. They knew if they stayed any longer, something terrible was gonna happen. They could feel it. They were not gonna make it out alive. Eventually, Captain Portlock gave in to the crew's demands and they left Port Chatham Bay. Most people who know the story of Portlock, Alaska are familiar with Captain Portlock and his crew because that is the general assumption of how Portlock got its name. But the story of Portlock and Port Chatham Bay begin much earlier than that. Before Captain Portlock and his crew arrived, a group of Spanish explorers also found themselves in Port Catham Bay, seeking respite from their long journey and the harsh seas. And they too encountered that abandoned native village, except they didn't view it the same way the British had. They were scared. Why on earth would people leave this place? What happened to make an entire village pack up and go, leaving behind their homes as well as these plentiful resources? They didn't like this one bit, but they had no choice. They needed a place to rest and replenish. And just as the British crew had, the Spanish immediately started falling ill with this mysterious sickness. And they started feeling paranoid as well, like whatever had chased these villagers out was now watching them. And during the night, they would hear these horrifying high-pitched cries seemingly coming from up the mountain and slowly rolling down through the trees and into their camps. The Spanish, they didn't stay any longer than they needed to. As soon as they were ready, they left Port Chatham Bay and whatever was hiding in its forest behind. While I was researching for this video, I came across a story that sent chills down my spine. In 1876, a nomadic community of Sugpiak found themselves in the area of what would soon become Portlock. Within one month of arriving, the group reported being attacked almost nightly by creatures that they could only describe as hairy cannibalistic giants who would come down from the mountain and raid their camps at night. After years of attacks from the giant hairy men and unwilling to continue the fight, the Sugpiak community fled Portlock. They said they feared the days that the game would become scarce because those were the days the cannibals would come. They named the giant hairy creatures the Nantanok, meaning the ones who steal people. In 1900, a commercial fishing company established a cannery in Portlock 
which drew workers from the surrounding villages. But even this new prosperity couldn't overshadow the creeping fear. Something was watching them from the forest. The cannery supervisor noted in 1905, the native workers were so scared by something lurking in the surrounding forest that they all left and would not return until the next year. There is not much other information other than the supervisor's note, but one has to wonder if the workers left when the game became scarce and came back when it was plentiful. And despite the rumors and the stories from the native Alaskans in the surrounding villages, the town of Portlock started to thrive. It attracted miners, fishermen, lumbermen, and cannery workers who built houses, businesses, and schools. And in 1921, they established a post office, officially putting the small town on the U.S. Census. But the good times, they didn't last that long. The residents of Portlock began seeing and hearing things out in the woods, and they would find mysterious animal tracks just outside of town larger than any local wildlife. A hunting party was out tracking a moose when they came across a set of human-like footprints. These footprints were 18 inches long, and the hunters were shocked to see these footprints were tracking the same moose as them. The men got the courage to follow the tracks. They needed to see what this thing was. They had followed the tracks for a mile before they finally stumbled upon a section of snow-covered grass that appeared to have been part of a struggle. Whatever was tracking the moose had caught up to it, but there was no moose. Whatever it was had picked up the moose carcass and carried it up the miscovered mountain. As time went on, some residents of Portlock had come face to face with this monster, but they didn't make it out alive. There were stories of loggers and hunters that would go missing for months, only to have their bodies washed down the streams flowing from the mountains into the lagoon in Portlock. And when their corpses were discovered, it was said they were mangled beyond recognition and not in a way they had ever seen from any animal. No one in town was safe, so they issued strict rules like a curfew at night and armed guards to patrol the streets. And mothers would tell their children, don't play in the woods, or the hairy man will take you. And it wasn't just the hairy man that was terrifying the people of Portlock. For hundreds of years, Native Alaskans have been telling stories of spirits in the forest, the ghosts of the ones who were taken. They were trapped, roaming the same forest where their lives had been cut short. And in 1920, an Anchorage newspaper had ran an article of a giant, terrifying, hairy creature that was stalking the entrance to one of the mines in Portlock. One of the most well-known deaths in Portlock is that of Andrew Camlock. In 1931, Andrew Camlock was working as a logger in Portlock. When he didn't return home one day, they sent a search party out to find him. They found his body in the woods. His skull had been crushed. And the only thing in the area that was large enough to deliver such a catastrophic deadly blow was a piece of logging equipment they had found nearby. It had Andrew's blood on it, but it was much too heavy for any man to pick up. Fueled by rumors and sightings and constant fear of being taken or killed by whatever lurked beyond the trees, the residents of Portlock had had enough and they fled, abandoning the town almost overnight. They were terrified, and many of them packed up what belongings they could and just left, leaving behind homes and all their possessions, leaving the once thriving Portlock abandoned and frozen in time. But that wouldn't be the last time an unfortunate soul would encounter the Nantanok. In 1968, a man was out hunting goats in the area when he found himself being relentlessly pursued through the dark, dense forest by an unidentified and terrifying creature. And in the early 1970s, three men, Dennis, Ed, and Joe, were hunting for goats and black bears on the lower Cook Inlet of the Kenai Peninsula. As the storm rolled in, they were forced to set up camp and take shelter in a bay near Portlock. They were planning on staying there to wait out the storm. And after they had made dinner that night, the men had gotten into their old green canvas tent to go to sleep. It was a clear night, but the wind was so strong that it howled through the trees and down to the shore of the bay. At around 2 a.m., Ed was startled awake by Dennis's hand clamping down on his leg and squeezing. Confused and in pain, Ed looks up only to be met with a frightened Dennis holding his fingers to his lips. Shh, listen. Ed strained to hear what Dennis was hearing, and it didn't take too long before he did. Something was outside their tent. They could hear the heavy footfall of a large animal, and it was close, probably only 10 feet away. The pair woke up Joe, the third member of their group, with the same signal to be quiet and listen. There was something off about this heavy footfall. It was deliberate, like whatever it was was sneaking around their tent. And when it had made it halfway around, the footsteps stopped. Everything went quiet. The three men remained awake for the rest of the night, waiting for whatever it was to return. But it didn't. The men had convinced themselves that it, it must have been a bear or, or some other animal just passing by. The next day, the storm was still going strong and the men were unable to sail out into the bay. So Dennis, Ed, and Joe, they had no choice but to stay another night. And the next night, even though they were pretty sure it was just a bear or another animal, they made sure to sleep with the rifle in their tent, just in case. The men were exhausted and it didn't take long for them to fall asleep on that second night. And once again, at around 2 a.m., 
Ed was woken up in the same fashion he had been the night before. Dennis's hand clasped around his leg and his fingers to his lips. Shh, it's back. Joe was already awake and clutching the rifle to his chest. Ed didn't have to strain to hear it this time. It was there, heavy, deliberate footfall and it was close. The men sat awake, huddled together in their tent, terrified as they silently listened to what they could only describe as something massive walking around their tent. Whatever it was, it was huge, and it was walking on two legs. Out of panic and desperation, the men finally got the courage to leap out of the tent and shine their flashlight in the direction of the noise. But the night had swallowed whatever had been lurking, as if it had never been there. But the men knew something had been there, something unnatural. They were lucky to escape, Many before them had not. Because in Portlock, when the sun goes down and the fog rolls in, the monsters will come. The Nantanok. The ones who steal people.